One lie after another, some even more outrageous than the last batch, and one after the other, they keep getting debunked. Since October 7, Israel has employed a well-orchestrated PR campaign to change narratives it dislikes, spread false information, and drum up support for its decades-long occupation of Palestinian territories, and its brutal onslaught on blockaded Gaza. On October 17, 2023, more than 500 people were killed in an Israeli airstrike on Al Ahli Arab Hospital in Gaza City. Tel Aviv denied responsibility and pinned the blame on the Palestinian resistance group Islamic Jihad, which denied the claim. Independent investigators and weapons experts analyzed videos and ultimately concluded that the Israeli military was responsible for the strike. Then in November, the Israeli army, which said it would never do such a thing as bombing a hospital, bombed and raided Gaza's largest hospital, El Shifa, alleging that Hamas was operating a command center in tunnels beneath the complex, a claim repeatedly denied by both Hamas and hospital administration. The Israeli army even shared a fabricated 3D animation to reveal what the tunnels apparently looked like. But since Israeli forces finally gained access to the hospital, the military has yet to provide concrete evidence of subterrain Hamas command center. Instead, all the public got were videos showing now-debunked evidence. Remember the infamous calendar at the al Sisi hospital? There is a list! And the fake nurse at Al-Shifa? The world has to know, has to know what Hamas is making here. They're taking over the entire hospital. Israel has a right to defend itself. That's a statement that has been repeated over and over again by Israel and its allies since Tel Aviv's war on the besieged enclave began. Israel calls its actions in Gaza and other places self-defense, but experts denounce the talking point, saying it's not validated by international law. The right to self-defense applies to a state when it is attacked by another and its national security and existence are exposed to danger. At that time, this state informs the United Nations first and then uses force to defend itself. This does not apply to the current situation here. Since Tel Aviv began its military campaign in Gaza, Israeli forces have intentionally targeted civilian areas throughout the enclave, accusing all of Gaza's residents of being aware and involved with Hamas. And in just three months, the civilian death toll reflects that mindset. With Israel having already killed more than 23,000 Palestinians, including 6,600 children, and forcing 1.9 million people, meaning over 80% of Gaza's population, to flee their homes and become displaced due to its relentless airstrikes. Considered a racist and colonialist ideology by many, Zionism is a foundational principle in Israel's right to exist and in its right to expand. Israel has long worked to weaponize and conflate anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism so that anyone critical of the Israeli state or its action is invariably and automatically charged with anti-Semitism. Israeli authorities use any and all anti-Zionist rhetoric as a political tool to undermine and smear critics and Palestinian advocates and to discourage Jews critical of Israel's inhumane and illegal activities from speaking up. The Israeli military has used deadly weapons and ammunition, including white phosphorus shells, in its attack on Gaza, a clear violation of international law. Despite this, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu continues to repeat that the Israeli army is the most moral army in the world. A tired trope and a macabre myth Israel continuously employs to justify its disproportionate use of force and its deliberate killings of thousands of civilians. Throughout its latest and ongoing bombing campaign in Gaza, Tel Aviv has been claiming that Palestinian civilians are being killed because Hamas is using them as human shields. However, no evidence has been put forth to substantiate this claim and even international organizations have been unable to verify it. In fact, rights groups argue that the use of human shields is actually a common practice employed by Israeli soldiers. 
Even the safe zones in Gaza aren't safe. Soon after ordering Palestinians in northern Gaza to move to the south, which it assured would be a safe zone, Israel began bombing the southern region, alleging that it was also a center of Hamas activity. Israeli officials designated Al Mawasi in southern Gaza as a safe zone that would have access to humanitarian aid. Yet, what displaced Palestinians found instead was a desolate wasteland without any infrastructure. Following the killing of Al Jazeera journalist Samer Abu Daqqa in Gaza, the Israeli army stated on December 16 that it has never and will never deliberately target journalists. However, since October 7, Israel has killed at least 109 journalists in Gaza. While Israel overlooks its illegal occupation of Palestinian land and ongoing bombardments of Gaza, it refers to Palestinian resistance groups, including Hamas, as terrorist organizations. All while Tel Aviv itself faces accusations of war crimes and human rights violations. Israel has also been trying to liken Hamas, which has a robust political wing and won 2007 elections in Gaza with a strong mandate, to Daesh. However, Israel's goal in equating the two is to justify its killings of civilians under Hamas rule. Just like the US-led anti-Daesh coalition swayed the public into accepting the killing of thousands of civilians during its anti-terror operations across Syria and Iraq. Following Hamas's attack on Israel, Israeli media reported that the Palestinian group had killed at least 40 babies, quoting Israeli forces as the source of this information. A spokeswoman for Prime Minister Netanyahu's office corroborated the story, saying that babies and toddlers had been discovered with their heads decapitated. But soon thereafter, international journalists and news agencies who had reported the story walked back on their reports, and Israeli officials said they could not confirm that any babies had been beheaded. Soon after Tel Aviv began bombarding Gaza, Israelis started accusing Palestinians of acting and faking deaths and destruction. Many took to social media posting videos wearing makeup and fake blood to mock wounded Palestinians and making claims that dead Palestinian babies were actually dolls as part of a trend ridiculing what they called Hollywood, a term made up of two words, Palestine and Hollywood. Even with almost 2 million people displaced, thousands dead, countless children injured, hospitals destroyed and inoperational, schools and safe zones bombed, a near total absence of shelter, food, water and medicine, ongoing communication and electricity blackouts, Israeli state officials are repeatedly stating that there is no humanitarian crisis in the besieged enclave. As the world witnesses Israel's actions and the eradication of Gaza and its population in real time, how much longer will Israel persist in weaving its false narratives? <laughs>